Good morning. I'm going to call to order this hearing of the Senate Tax Committee on February 14th. Um, first bill, uh, first of all, however, we have the adoption of the minutes. The minutes are in your folders. Are there any corrections? Seeing none, the minutes are approved as presented. The first bill in front of us today is um, Senate File 64, uh, Senator Leonard. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair and members. Senate File number 64 is, a, is seeking a sales tax exemption for a civic product, project known as the North Metro Regional Public Safety Facility also known as the North Range. Um, it's uh, located in Maple Grove. Uh, you may recall that a few years ago we passed this in a bonding issue, and it is uh, nearing completion, uh, hopefully for this uh, late uh, spring. And um, it's, it's uh, a, the purpose of the, of the building is to be a training facility, a modern training facility for law enforcement training. It serves 19 different agencies right now. So it's a very uh, important uh, development, not only in Maple Grove, but for the importance of those 19 communities that uh, need a building like that for modern law enforcement training. Uh, I have with me today uh, two test fires. One is Chief Eric Werner from Maple Grove and Greg Stika, the finance director from Maple Grove, if you have further questions. And uh, Madam Chair, uh, allow them to say a few words. Um, surely, um, Senator Limmer. Uh, welcome to the committee, gentlemen. Um, who would like to begin? I can speak. Go ahead. Okay. And, if, and if you would identify yourself uh, for the record. Sure. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the committee. My name is Eric Horner. I'm the Chief of Police for the City of Maple Grove. And I just want to thank the committee for the opportunity to provide testimony in support of this bill uh, that would allow for a refundable uh, sales tax exemption on the materials and supplies for the construction um, for the North Metro Regional Public Safety Training uh, Facility expansion in Maple Grove. Um, as Senator uh, Limmer mentioned, our facility serves approximately 19 to 20 agencies. Um, that is from the local, county, state, and federal level, and it also includes post-secondary institutions. Um, this expansion project is adding approximately 30,000 square feet to provide state-of-the-art technology uh, for our facility. And a few things uh, that I just want to describe what that includes. Additional classroom space for de-escalation and crisis intervention training. Simunition space for scenario-based training dedicated uh, space for deci uh, decision-making simulation lab. Essentially, it's gonna be like a virtual uh, decision-making lab and increased firearms uh, training lanes. Um, Maple Grove received state bonding uh, funds of 3.5 million in support of the project back in 2020 legislative session and the project is currently under construction. Um, we uh, believe that will be uh, open and fully operational by no later than uh, mid-April. The city of Maple Grove, Hennepin County, cities of Plymouth and Brooklyn Park are our main joint powers agreement users, and uh, they help fund the balance of the $17.5 million project. The taxable materials are estimated at uh, $4.5 million with an exemption impact of over $300,000. Including the tax exemption for our uh, regional training facility allows the city and all of our partners to maximize its investment in the expansion project, which ultimately will ensure the highest quality technology, facility, and training for our law enforcement officials. So Madam uh, Chair and members of the committee, again, I just want to thank you for the opportunity to provide my comments today. And uh, I have myself, Greg Steek, our finance director here. Uh, we can answer any questions that you may have. Mr. Steek, did you want to add any uh, testimony? Madam Chair and members, no, uh, no additional testimony. Thank you very much. Are, are there Questions or comments for um, the author or um, um, Chief Werner? Um, Senator Limmer, would you just go back over the history of this, uh, of this project when it was started? 
and where the bumps in the road have been in getting us to this point. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> A few short years ago, uh, the existing gun range in Maple Grove for law enforcement had been there for quite a few years, uh, relatively small. It was built for the purposes of the local law enforcement agency in Maple Grove. Uh, I believe Hennepin County and uh, federal authorities used it because it was close to their facilities. Uh, I think a few other law enforcement agencies used it as well because those other law enforcement agencies did not have a gun range. It had very limited classroom uh, space, and I believe it did have a simulation uh, facility, but that too was rather antiquated. Uh, Maple Grove sought uh, a bonding issue, which it was granted, uh, I believe, 20, not, uh, 2020, and uh, construction began. Uh, it was kind of an off and on during those years, whether or not we'd ever get to a bonding bill. Uh, but once we did, uh, we did get the issuance of the bond, and now it's uh, been under construction. And okay. um, Senator Limmer, it's going to be finished in April? Uh, late April of this year. And then become operational how quickly, Chief? Uh, Madam Chair, um, Actually, it's partially operational right now while we finish the expansion, and we believe it to be fully operational in April. And this facility is going to be available to um, which communities? Uh, Madam Chair, um, if I could direct you to this document okay. in your folder. Uh, this will have the emblems and the names of the facility, of the uh, agencies that are using it now and plan to use it in the future. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, um, Senator Limmer. Um, I, I think we are going to look favorably on this uh, oh, on you. this project. Um, and I appreciate your bringing it um, back to us, and so that we can uh, contribute to it. Senator Nelson, you had a question. Oh, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Oh, you already spoke very kindly of this. I just wanted to note for uh, folks who might not know, I know you would remember this was part of our Senate tax bill in 2022 and right. part of the agreement on the conference committee report. And it was one step towards getting to where we've all talked about we'd like to go, which is not local governments, not taxing local governments, uh, and particularly in public safety. So thank you, Madam Chair. Sure. Anything further from anyone? Uh, Thank you very much, uh, Senator Limmer. Senate File 64 is laid over. Thank you, Madam Chair and members. Um, the next item on our agenda is, um, I put it? I just need to find my own. Well, I think it must be Senator Draskowski because he was getting up, so. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Senator um, Driscalfi, just give me a second here till I get my agenda back up. <sighs> Senator Driscalfi brings us uh, Senate File uh, 313. Um, Senator Driscalfi, if you would present your bill, and then we'll call on the Mazeppa Sini administrator who is testifying remotely um, as your testifier, as your witness. Senator Dreskowski. Thank you, Madam Chair and members. Um, Senate file. By the way, Madam Chair, thank you for hearing the bill. This is my first bill ever heard in the Minnesota Senate, so um, I'm excited. It's, it's our pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I'll take a picture of <laughs> No, no, we can't. I'm not allowed to do that. <laughs> you can fake it afterwards. How about that? Uh, so, so, Madam Chair, members, this is probably um, this is a very simple so, bill. Um, Driskowski, would you like to offer your author's amendment first? Oh, I would. Um, Madam Senator, Chair, I would move the A1 amendment. Senator Driskowski offers the A1 amendment. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say no. The... Um, uh, the amendment is adopted. Senator Skalski, go, go right ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. 
Um, so this would extend the, we already have in law this sales tax exemption for a building that burned down in 2018 in the middle of Mazeppa, a very small town of 874 people now. Um, it was uh, WD's and it was, a, it was a bar and grill. It was a, it was a restaurant uh, largely. And uh, we have it in law, uh, but uh, the time has expired. Uh, this was in last year's conference committee report to extend it as well. And members, that's the bill. Uh, <clears throat> Senator um, Driskowski, so the um, amendment um, covers purchases made um, for another year and a half here, two years almost. Um, why, why do you need the time until 2025? I'm just curious. Madam Chair, I think we might want to ask the uh, city administrator and, okay. and staff there uh, more about the schedule. Uh, but I know they made the amendment in the House, and uh, that's, otherwise it would have... That's not a recommendation over here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. So, um, you know, January 1st of 2024 is, is 10 months away, and the building has not started yet. And I see. I didn't, I didn't oh. understand. So it's not... It's not, uh, it's still in anticipating the construction itself. Correct. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, Senator, we have um, Carl uh, Norgang, the Mazeppa City Administrator with us. Uh, if you would identify yourself, please, for the record, we welcome your testimony. Uh, my name is Carl Norgang. I am the uh, city Administrator Clerk for the City of Mazeppa. Um, sir, if you'd like to explain a little bit more about and give us a little bit few, few, a few more details about the project and what and what the City of Mazeppa um, envisions this project to um, be and um, how it's going to help your city. Madam Chair, the uh, uh, the project is right now that lot has been vacant since the fire and the cleanup effort, um, and we've been uh, Senator Draskowski as Representative Draskowski also um, had put forth this in the in the House and had helped us along to try to incentivize. Uh, a business to rebuild at that location. Um, we feel that if we have a vibrant downtown, it's also going to help our population growth. Uh, it will also help our, our population growth, will drive our business growth. And this is kind of a, a stepping stone or a cornerstone actually of trying to uh, rejuvenate um, our downtown area. Um, we don't have an extremely large um, main street compared to some other communities, but then again, we're a lot smaller than a lot com of communities. But I think the types of businesses that would thrive here, if they could see that we've moved forward, this bit of uh, renewal and growth will stimulate, um, you know, other uh, businesses to to move in so one hand can can kind of help the other so we're we're actually um, creating more economic activity within the community uh, um, Mr. Norgan, how, how many people are in the city of Mazeppa? what's your population uh, our population as of the current census is 874 officially mm -hmm. um, and like I said, we're trying to make that growth to, you know, to get to that, that 1,000 mark, which seems to, once you get over 1,000, it does seem like it, it attracts more attention from uh, uh, people who may want to invest here. Um, thank you very much. Are there questions or comments for Mr. Norgang or for Senator Driskowski? Seeing none, um, Senator Skalski, uh, Senate File 313 is laid over to be included in the omnibus bill. Thank you, Madam Chair and members.
Um, I'm sorry. Um, three, Senate File 313 as amended. Senator Dreskowski is laid over for inclusion. Um, our third bill is um, Senator Mitchell's. I don't believe, is she here? No, oh, there she is. Okay. Senator Mitchell brings us um, Senate File 473. Senator Mitchell. Good morning, Madam Chair. Um, similar to some of the things that we've heard already this morning, this would be an exemption. Um, cities, of course, could have the exemption buying materials, but it's much more convenient when you bid a contract to be able to get the builders themselves to buy the materials. This is specifically for our Central Park, which I would say in Woodbury is the closest thing we have to a community center. Um, just within the last couple weeks, I held my first town hall there because there's an amphitheater. It's connected to a gym and a senior center. Um, I was there last Friday because my foster son had an assessment with ECFE. They held some services there. Our public library is there. There's a play place for the kids, an indoor park for the winter. Um, so it's a really, really lovely place, but it is in need of some upgrades. Um, so there's a separate bill that will be coming later this year that, that will provide money for the upgrades, hopefully. But right now, the project is going to go forward regardless. And we're just looking for that tax exemption so that the builders can get the materials without the city having to play middleman with that tax exemption. And I have the mayor with me as well. Madam Chair, if she could say a few words. Of course. Um, welcome to the committee, if you'd identify yourself for the record. Absolutely. Good morning. My name is Ann Burt, Mayor of Woodbury. <clears throat> Happy Valentine's Day to all, and it's also um, a special day. It's Woodbury's 56th birthday, so pretty appropriate to be here talking about some uh, upgrades and improvements to our community. Um, we are uh, very honored to um, have this public amenity, as Senator Mitchell so graciously described, um, how appropriate that you had experienced all those great things in the last week um, at our lovely community center. Um, it is an indoor gathering space. We do happily host people from across the region. It's multicultural, multi-generational, educational, and it's a recreation opportunity um, offered, um, as Senator Mitchell has shared. Um, we are at this point in the life cycle of the building that it is in need of major upgrades, remodeling, construction throughout the facility. This includes upgrades to accessibility, um, wayfinding, um, adding single-use restrooms, increasing all mo our multi-purpose space, uh, for larger events, meetings, and public programs. Um, on behalf of the city of Woodbury, I humbly ask that you consider exempting these construction materials as presented in Senate File 473 from Minnesota Sales Tax. We're aware that this type of request has been granted for many other public facilities. We're pleased to, um, that common sense tax policy ensures that local government does not pay sales tax on construction materials and reduces the cost of the project. Are there questions um, or comments for um, Senator Mitchell or um, or the mayor, Senator Weber? Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a quick question: uh, Central Park is that the same Central Park project that's for which there's a TIF project? Uh, some changes requested. Um, that is true. It is related to that, uh, Senator. Um, uh, the, the TIP projects has to do with a small corridor that connects our uh, senior a senior living facility to the okay. to the, the Central Park itself. So it's a little district just connected to it. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, uh, thank you, Senator Weber. Um, Ms. Paula, the um, the language of the request for this sales tax exemption um, is a little bit different than others that we see. I wonder if you'd explain the difference between this one and those that the um, um, the first two of the uh, bills that were heard today. Madam, Madam Chair, um, yes, so uh, Senate File 473 contains the kind of standard materials and supplies used or consumed in and equipment incorporated into. Um, 
here, starting on line 1.9, there are some additional, um, I guess, activities that were that are generally not included in um, these kind of construction materials sales tax exemptions. So um, we see, you know, in addition to construction and reconstruction, um, upgrade, expansion, renovation, remodeling. Um, those are not, um, you know, I, I would I wouldn't say those are unprecedented, but um, generally we um, <clears throat> use the term uh, construction or reconstruction or replacement of property that was damaged, which we see which we see in um, Senate File three thirteen, and uh, also in um, in Senate File sixty four. Um, uh, we have we also have the terms um, upgrade, expansion, or remodeling um, for a number of local government facilities uh, that have already been enacted. The North Metro Regional Public Safety Facility being uh, a proposed new one. I see. Um, you know, we're trying to uh, look at a number of um, sales tax exemptions for local governments, particularly when um, they. Um, uh, are trying to put use the expenses from uh, that are incurred by the contractors for the projects, and um, it uh, we're trying to find, I think, you know, a um, uh, a reasonable streamlining of that. That when these when these projects come before us for the sales tax exemption. That they look more alike than they are different, and um, so I just wanted to bring that to your attention as we look at this one um, uh, going forward. And Senator Mitchell, is this the first time for this bill, or was it included before? Or maybe that's a question for the mayor. Um, was it in last bill, last year's bill? I believe it was in last year's as well. And, Mayor, was it the same language that we see before us? I don't have the answer to that, but I can find out. Senator someone Nelson, else do you remember? Madam Chair, I... Excuse me. Madam Chair, no, I do not recall. And I noticed some different language, too. I mean, it just felt different, but that yeah. means I just don't recall. Uh, we're just going to look at it, but um, it's... There's nothing wrong with it, okay? It's just just that we are getting different language things that you're seeing here, even from from bills that were um, introduced and included in the in the um, uh, uh, in the omnibus bill last year. This is not the same thing as a local option tax, as you know. It is just a straightforward, as far as that can be, um, sales tax exemption that um, already exists, but it's just clunky in getting the, um, uh, the refund to it. We, we don't charge local governments, but we also don't make it easy for them to get refunds of their, of their uh, costs. And part of the reason for that is if you have the, uh, who gets the benefit of the uh, sales tax exemption? Um, the contractor who buys, you know, 50 boards more than he needs, um, pays the sales tax on it. Uh, there is a refund, but um, it uh, uh, the, the contractor gets to keep the boards. Let's say, and so we've we've been uh, over the years just um, I wouldn't say particular, but certainly concerned. That there's not a um, uh, there's not a freeloading aspect of um, uh, of the uh, purchase of materials that then are not used uh, to whose benefit should that accrue? So we we take a look at that every now and then. Any other questions or comments for um, oops for um, Senator Mitchell or Mayor Burt? Then um, we the bill is laid over for inclusion, Senate File 473 in the omnibus bill. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we, um, we're trying to uh, schedule.
schedule our bills so that we do take the time of the committee and sometimes that just doesn't happen <laughs> and uh, we have to, we're trying to be very flexible with that um, we are going to take up um, bills as we go along we are we're waiting for the governor's language um, Ms. Bears uh, <laughs> Um, before we uh, take up the governor's bill. Um, we want to not look at a spreadsheet, although we've done that. Um, we want to look at the language um, of the bill. We have, um, I guess it won't be, it'll be on uh, Thursday's introductions, the governor's proposal uh, with regard to the IRRB. Uh, it's an agency proposal, and we have, uh, that will be uh, introduced um, tomorrow. We'll take a look, we'll take a look at that, but it's three pages long, so it's not a, it's not a long, uh, a long effort. We will then start, I know that Senator Nelson um, and Senator Housechild are now looking at the local sales tax proposals. Um, I'm looking at the ones, and we'll hear them in a group um, of the uh, uh, lodging, local lodging, um, uh, food and beverage proposals. We'll hear all of those on the same day. I think, again, might not be a long hearing, but there are like five or six bills that we'll put together, and then we'll start hearing the local sales tax um, uh, proposals, of which there are a number. We will do that as we wait for looking at the language of the governor's bill, and then there are other there are other provisions, uh, some of which are very similar or deal with the same subject that I know are important to some of our members. Um, and even if it is in the governor's bill, we're going to take a look at this historic um, historic uh, uh, building. Uh, tax credit um, because that's that's one that's pretty important to a number of our members and uh, uh, we'll probably take that up toward the beginning of our consideration of the governor's bill. Any any questions or complaints? Senator Housechild has a complaint. <laughs> <laughs> Always. <clears throat> Chair Rest, thank you for your comments about the local local sales tax. Um, Senator Nelson and I are going to hold open our calendars on Friday, noon to 5, and have reached out to the cities that applied to meet with us and talk about their proposals. So if anybody has any that uh, you would like to push them to, <laughs> to meet with us, um, we'll have that, that time available, and then we'll seek more time if we need it. And Senator Housechild and Senator Nelson, where, <clears throat> where, are we, where are you meeting? It's going to be Zoom it's with those Zoom communities. Okay. Yep. And will your... LA have uh, one of your LAs is uh, in charge of that. Yes. Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, Senator Nelson. Yes, uh, the uh, the LAs are scheduling. Have reached out to every community. Terrific. And I don't have a report yet as far as how many have uh, responded and scheduled, but we'll make sure everybody has an opportunity. And as uh, Senator Hostchild said, if it doesn't all get done on Friday, this coming Friday, mm -hmm. we'll open up up another window. And that Zoom meeting will be available um, to be viewed by any member of the tax committee? Well, I hadn't thought of that, Madam Chair. We could do that. Well, we'll send out a, uh, that's a very good idea. I mean, you could just have people coming in and out, you know, and, but yes, yes. We, some I believe of us we... wanted to, um, or our staff, yeah. um, you know, here. Um, Madam Chair, it's a great idea. Uh, we will uh, send a, uh, just as if it were a Friday hearing, we'll make sure all of the tax staff and members have an opportunity to come in, in and out as they would wish. Okay, I think that great would idea. be, it would certainly be appreciated by me. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else? Anybody? Okay, we, no further business, we are adjourned.